Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Steve Kinney. I'm a producer and engineer, content creator here in Nashville, Tennessee. Live streaming doesn't have to be difficult, but more often than not, if you have an Apollo and you're on Mac OS, it is. Watch this video all the way to the end and I promise you, you're gonna understand what the heck is going on with your Apollo in those situations. Now, disclaimer, this is really only for Mac, Windows users. I'm so sorry, you're gonna have to find someone that has a Windows computer. But Mac users, rejoice, I've got you covered. If you make it to the end of this video and you still kind of are having trouble, feel free to book a mentor session with me at my website, thestevekinney.com. And additionally, if you're a music producer, you might find my presets useful and it's a great way to support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. All right, let's dive into the video. All right, before we get started, chapter one, we need to know a few things going into this. The first thing we need to wrap our minds around is that the Apollo, at the end of the day, is more of a digital console than it is an interface. The reason I say this is take a look at uh, something like the Behringer X32 or the PreSonus rack mount mixers. They're a mixer but they don't have faders. This is a mixer, it doesn't have faders, and you can use both the X32, like an interface, or the, Baron, uh, the PreSonus uh, rack mount mixer as an interface. You can use this as an interface as well. Of course, it's a very, very fancy interface because it has DSP uh, and it looks shiny, but at the end of the day, it's, it kind of operates almost the exact same as one of those. So if that's true, it would have some sort of software that would allow me to control the faders. Oh yeah, it does. It has UAD console. So now that we got that out of the way, there's one really key takeaway there, is that we have physical inputs and physical outputs, and we can kind of route them any way we want because they've also included some sort of a digital patch bay, if you want to call it that, they've named it IO Matrix. So let's dive into this a bit and kind of show some more examples of that. All right, here is the digital mixer that is essentially controlling what's happening uh, with our signals on the input side. And from here, you know, if I had a bunch of mics, I could create a mix and this mix would by default kind of go to our main output or the volume of the interface. Um, I could also route it to these aux channels over here, or I could also create independent headphone mixes. This is exactly like a console. There's no other way of saying it. And it's funny because they named it console. Gee, go figure. All right, let's look at IO Matrix. IO Matrix on my X8 has 34 digital inputs, and then it has 36 digital outputs. And the best way to think of this is the digital inputs and digital outputs are the signals that are being sent to the computer. So again, it doesn't matter physically what's connected. What is defined in this input and output section is what the computer sees. This is the most important part of getting your signals that you want into your live stream or into your Zoom audio call. Here's a few situations that you might have run into. One, you go to screen record and all of your audio is in mono. Two, you jump on a Zoom call and the listener on the other side can only hear you out of the left speaker. Or three, you have a program called loopback and now you're thoroughly confused. So let's touch on that. This is the actual problem. In Mac OS, Simple applications like Chrome, OBS, Zoom, they only see digital inputs one and two and digital outputs one and two. So if we're going back to this IO matrix thing, that means all it's gonna see are these two guys right here. Whatever this is defined as, that is the source audio for your Zoom or for your live stream. Let's jump to this diagram and it might explain it a little bit more clearly if you're currently super confused. I was at first. All right, this is my genius diagram that I put together in seriously two minutes, but this is, again, everything we just talked about. You've got physical inputs and these physical inputs are seriously basically sent straight back out uh, as soon as they come in, unless you go here and you go boom. Turning all these off, or if I hit the mute, 
right? Then they won't be sent straight back out because I've muted them. Now it's at this point that you might be saying, hey Steve, but these go right into my DAW. What are you talking about? Well, the reason they go straight into your DAW is because they are defined here in IO matrix. And you can see the IO matrix signal is what is sent to your computer and handled by your host application. So on channel one, if I were to change this to say virtual channel one, well, it doesn't matter that I have my microphone connected. My DAW would see virtual channel one as the input. Hopefully you're following along now. Uh, so all of the input side is now being sent to the computer. And from there, your host application sees it. This is how your DAW works. But more importantly, we need to talk about the output side. So on the output side, your host software sees these channel numbers as destinations. And from there, you can map where that source destination meet and then where it goes physically to your Apollo. So again, by default, channels one and two are aimed at going directly to your monitor left and right. But you could change this if you wanted to. So for example, if on the back of your Apollo, you physically connected your left and right monitors to channels seven and eight, or if you had a series of two additional left and right monitors, maybe for your near fields or um, maybe they're just crappy speakers and you want to be able to test your mix on crappy speakers versus good speakers. This is how you could define those things. What that actually looks like is, okay, boom, seven, and right here it says eight. So just, again, you kind of have to imagine here that monitor left and right is looking for signals one and two. Line seven and eight are now looking for and receiving audio from digital channels three and four. Again, this is really useful in a DAW situation. Not so useful in a simple application like Zoom. So if Zoom is solely looking for channels one and two, and I need to send it like my mix audio, or I want to be able to screen share with audio, what you could do is choose monitor left and then you go down to the next one choose monitor right and now zoom is looking for channels one and two and the audio that's coming from channels one and two is now whatever is coming out of my main left and right this is exactly how you'd screen record and get a clean left and right signal so jumping back to this diagram if we follow along our physical inputs are kind of going in are going in here and straight back out. Whatever we defined in IO matrix hits our computer. What about our system audio? Where does that go? Well, system audio will go wherever you define it. So if we go to audio MIDI setup. Right here on output, you got an input side, output side. If I hit configure speakers, I can choose where to send my system audio. So this becomes super useful. If I go virtual channel one and virtual channel two and hit apply, now my audio will be showing up in this console mixer. So let's do that. Let's, let's go to Spotify. All right, so here you go. All right, so I've got my system audio routed to virtual one and two. I'm telling console that I want my inputs for channels one and two to be monitor left and right. And I have this audio coming down. I'm gonna turn it down here. I have this audio coming down virtual one and two. It is hitting my left and right physical outputs. But digitally, there's still no signal coming in here on analog one and two. Why? Because if we go back to the very beginning, this is showing our physical inputs. 
So if I have a mic connected to channel one, of course, it will then show up there. But if I were to screen record, the screen recording would only take its signal from whatever channel one and two is, regardless of whether or not this mic is connected here. So ho hopefully this is really starting to all click and make some sense here. So once system audio is defined, that system audio is going to be sent to one of these channels here. From there, wherever that audio is being sent to this channel, whatever lines up with that channel is where the audio is going to go. So again, in this instance, we chose virtual channel one and virtual channel two as our output destination but virtual channel one and two can also act as input destinations. You're starting to see what's happening here. My audio is now basically just being sent to an input source. So if the theory holds true, I could send them directly to line outputs. It doesn't really matter where I send them. The key in the trick is where is the source audio for inputs one and two? digitally. All right, so I've now probably thoroughly confused you and you're probably still wondering, well, how the heck do I actually use this in practice with Zoom? What I do in my one-on-one -on -one sessions or if I were to do a live Zoom with someone, what I would do is I would make the digital software inputs. I want the source audio to be coming from aux one and now the right side would be aux one R. So I got aux one left and right, which means this source, whatever audio comes down this path is what you're going to hear in the stream or, you know, in the feed. Now this is really useful because if I have my system audio coming here, say for example, the person on the other line, they're talking to me, I can hear them because I have a physical headphone connected and it's mirroring whatever is coming down the mix on the main channel or the main left and right. They're hearing whatever is on aux one, which would currently be nothing. But if I were to send any sort of audio to it, you can start to see they're getting that audio now. So that's what you want to do. You want to predefine what those two digital inputs are. The secret is really simple. It's IO matrix, what's on channels one and two, because this one first two channels are what all of those applications see. And so again, you're taking the system audio, routing it back into the input side. That input then goes into the computer and the application, the host application can now see that audio. It then spits it back to the output physically and routes it back out so you can hear it in addition to whatever live signal is being processed by the Apollo. Hopefully that really translates well and this video makes a lot of sense. And if you're ever at all confused about this, all you need to think about is what is my source audio and where is the destination for it? So you can think of a microphone, right? What is the source audio for the microphone? Well, it'd be your voice. Okay, well, what's the destination for my voice? the microphone. Well, where does the microphone go? Well, it goes to the output of the mic. Where's the output of the mic go? It goes to the physical input on the Apollo. Where does the physical input on the Apollo go? I don't know. It depends where you define it. So that's, that's the key takeaway. Define your input sources for your applications or for your output of your applications and always think about where your source comes from. I, I don't know how I could break it down any simpler than that. Here's, here's one more pro tip. Uh, just come up here and save your preset, right? So for me, if I were to jump on a call with someone, right, I just hit live stream and then it automatically loads that session data up. And then if I want to go back to working in a DAW situation, I just come here, click default, and everything goes back to normal. Now for me, again, I don't really need to send my system audio down a virtual channel. I can still send it to monitor left and right. And I can come back into this software and still define inputs one and two to be aux one and two. And the benefit of that is that 
I can still hear the client or I can still hear who's ever on the other side of Zoom through the headphone mix and they can still hear whatever is coming down aux one and then in your DAW if you're trying to send audio from your DAW you can route the DAW through a virtual channel or through the aux channel. Yeah, I think I've covered just about every kind of possible situation. Um, yeah, if you're screen recording you could just define inputs one and two as monitor left and right and then then you'd be good. If you're doing a live stream, yeah, you probably want to be more specific in say aux one or virtual channels one and two. Yeah, so to summarize really, really clearly and simply, these are the input sources that your host sees. So whatever is defined here for one and two, that's what Chrome Zoom sees as your source. And then to spit that audio out, they send it to these channels and whatever these channels are defined as. That's a secret. All right, so hopefully after going through all of that, you guys have a better understanding of what's going on inside of your Apollo. And it all makes more sense. If it's still difficult, again, reach out to me uh, via the one-on-one -on -one sessions. I'd be happy to help you out and spend time making sure that you understand exactly what you're doing. If you've made it this far into the video, please give the video a like, leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have and subscribe to the channel for all things UAD, Apollo, and Luna. Until the next video, guys, cheers and thanks for watching.